Well, Oklahoma farmers like ag producers across the nation have enjoyed record prices this past year, and with those higher prices have come even higher input costs on items like fertilizer and fuel, which are used a lot by farmers. And while commodity prices have retreated from their historic highs, input costs have stayed up there. But as we learned recently, what's a problem for some is turning into an opportunity for others and an interesting solution to the challenge of how to meet the demand for food while preserving the land around it. Fall is planting season in western Oklahoma, preparing the ground for another year's wheat crop. This pasture out here, we sowed the wheat and uh, then grazed and then probably cut for grain. That's if everything works, and that's rare. Jeremy York is accustomed to contending with everything from weather to insects. But this year, like farmers across the state, he's facing a new challenge, the high cost of energy-based products, namely fuel and fertilizer. Jeff Craybill serves on the Oklahoma Wheat Commission. Our main concerns right now is our input cost is every American knows right now that fuel is, is uh, high and is cutting into their pocketbook and likewise in the agriculture industry. And of course fertilizer is one of our major uh, inputs and the price of fertilizer has tripled over the last two or three years. That's because natural gas is a key component in making commercial nitrogen fertilizer. Uh, if I add X number of dollars of fertilizer, what's going to be my, what's going to be the result of doing that? And so. Uh, it's a, it's a guessing game. A high stakes game farmers are betting their crop yields and their livelihoods on. If we can get something that can, uh, can average 30 bushel a year, we're happy. Which may not be good enough with prices where they are. Input costs on a single acre of wheat have now reached $260. So just to break even, farmers will need to raise 35 bushels an acre with wheat prices at $8 a bushel. That is our state average, is 35 bushels an acre. So an average crop won't make you money. You have to be above the, the state average in order to be able to, to turn a profit if you have $8 wheat, and we don't have $8 wheat today. But the answer to such a dilemma may be a lot easier and a lot closer than anyone has ever imagined. I'm here in eastern Oklahoma, which is home to a poultry industry worth about a half a billion dollars. And with all those birds comes all the stuff they leave behind. It's called poultry litter. It's a mixture of molten feathers and poultry waste. But poultry waste may be a poor term because experts say poultry litter is both an efficient and very effective fertilizer. When I think of animal waste, I think of it more as an animal resource and something that we can use as an ag commodity, as an organic fertilizer. And according to waste management specialist Josh Payne, in eastern Oklahoma, there's plenty of it. Poultry houses dot the landscape, home to millions of birds. And for generations, farmers and ranchers here have used poultry litter instead of commercial fertilizers. Poultry litter is a great organic fertilizer source. It's loaded with nutrients such as nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. It also has organic matter. So it's a very beneficial uh, soil amendment that many producers can use. But too much of it is not good. Over applying any fertilizer can mean excessive nutrients that then can wash from the land into surface water. In 2005, Oklahoma Attorney General Drew Edmondson filed suit against several poultry companies to hold them liable for phosphorus runoff he believes comes from poultry spread in the Illinois River shed. Ultimately, if this, this litigation does go all the way th through its course, what would be the best results for the state of Oklahoma? Well, the best result would be uh, both a thriving poultry industry, both in Arkansas and Oklahoma, and the processing of the litter in a way that does not adversely impact the environment. I'd like to see our rivers restored to what they were in the 50s and 60s uh, and 70s, the purity and clarity of the water that we enjoyed uh, back then. I'd like to see our farm operations continuing to go uh, and the poultry industry continuing to thrive. It's a multi-billion dollar business and they can afford to process their waste like every other company and industry in America does. 
over the past several weeks, we've got to, to visit with some farmers in northeastern Oklahoma, and there, there's a great concern out there among many of them, the, of the law of unintended consequences. While you may be going directly after the out-of-state poultry companies, they, in fact, may be the ones that get hurt in this lawsuit. And we're doing our best to uh, avoid that. And obviously, if in a negotiated settlement, you've got more latitude to construct it in a way that there are no unintended consequences. That's a little more difficult uh, if we actually end up going to trial and get a jury verdict or a court verdict. Uh, it's a little harder to construct that than it is to construct a negotiated settlement. But I would ask them, uh, as they consider that, and it's a very real concern, uh, to look what's happened in Tulsa's lawsuit in the Uchi Spavanaugh watersheds where they reached uh, a negotiated agreement and today 70 percent of the waste is being trucked out of Uchi Spavanaugh and to my knowledge uh, no poultry operation is shut down, no company went out of business, uh, no farmer had to close his chicken houses uh, and the industry is proceeding as it did before except they're not putting that waste down on the ground. I think we can achieve that same result in the Illinois River watershed and the other watersheds of eastern Oklahoma. Which could well happen thanks to the high price of commercial fertilizers. For the past four years, Oklahoma farmer Randy Wadel has bought chicken litter in eastern Oklahoma to spread on his farm in central Oklahoma. And I learned why they call it litter. They don't just call it manure because there's a lot of other stuff in it, chicken bedding and, and uh, just everything that comes out of a chicken house. But the fact of the matter is, it's just a very fine material that when you spread it on the ground, you can see as I crumble it, you can see how fine it is. A little bit of rain or, or tilling it into the ground. And it's amazing what it does to your soil. All of these nutrients that, that are contained in poultry litter are essential for plant growth or crop growth. Uh, we see approximately 70% of the soils in Oklahoma are actually deficient in phosphorus. So if we can take some of this uh, phosphorus-rich poultry litter and transport it to parts of central Oklahoma or western Oklahoma that could use that nutrient, uh, that's a very viable option. Because of, of what they have to pay for those same nutrients at commercial fertilizer, they're finding those same nutrients uh, for a cheaper price in poultry litter. Now, it's going to depend on, on transportation and the distance from the source of the litter that will dictate how far you can actually haul poultry litter before it reaches a break even. However, due to price increases in commercial fertilizer, we're seeing that we can reach that break even much further west, meaning we can haul or transport poultry litter much further west in Oklahoma than we ever have been before. We get nutrient tests on every house cleaning that we get litter from and you get about 45 pounds of calcium too. So you get N, P, and K, you also get calcium. And the other thing you get is organic material, carbon, pure carbon. I mean, it builds your soil. And with, uh, I don't know, five, six, seven hundred pounds of pure carbon per ton, you're not just fertilizing, you're improving, you're improving the, the value, the tilth of your soil. Sounds like you're pretty sold on it. Um, it, it makes sense. So if it makes both economic and environmental sense, I bet you're wondering, if there's a catch? Well, both yes and no. Because the demand for poultry litter now outstrips its supply, it is harder to get. But at the same time, it's also worth more. So there's even more impetus for growers in eastern Oklahoma to ship it out of the affected watersheds. And what about the places where it's now being shipped to? Well, state officials say not to worry because they say new, stricter regulations are now in place that include both testing and training. I'm a card carrying litter spreader. I went to nine hours of education before they would give me a card to spread litter. My wife has a concealed carry gun license and she didn't even have to go to that much class. So, you know, when you think about it, I've got to have three hours of continuing education to spread litter. Mary packs her pistol without any continuing education, so I guess somebody thinks that chicken litter more, is more dangerous than, uh, than a pistol. And some do. This fall, a federal judge denied an injunction to completely stop the spreading of poultry litter in the Illinois River watershed. Now, despite that ruling, the case against poultry companies is still set to go to trial in 2009. In the meantime, though, poultry producers exported a record amount of poultry litter out of the affected watershed this past year. According to an industry group, 
85,000 tons of poultry litter were shipped to farms as far away as southwestern Oklahoma. But according to evidence supplied by the state in the federal lawsuit, that amount is still less than one-fourth of what the industry produces. Meanwhile, farmers like Wadel have been taking advantage of what appears to be an abundant resource. Yet that too could change in the coming months. The price of natural gas used to make commercial fertilizer has fallen dramatically in recent weeks, as well as the price of wheat, both of which are at their yearly low. Now, if you'd like to see our complete interview with Attorney General Edmondson or meet a poultry grower and hear what he thinks about all this, head to our website at okhorizon.com and click on this week's value added.